The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. How do you feel about the dark? Here's a scenario for you which will tell you how you react to it. Uh, I think we're all familiar with it. You are the last person uh, to have to switch off all the lights in the house before you go to bed. Okay, what do you do? I tend to differ from two different uh, methods. I often will switch on the landing lights um, and then I'll turn off all the other rooms in the house and then I'll walk as quickly as possible up the stairs following the light. Um, that's a very common method, I'll do that one. But sometimes, and this is gonna sound really weird, okay? I will turn off all the lights in the house, I won't turn on the upstairs, upstairs landing light and I will just stand in the darkness. Okay, and I will walk up the stairs as slowly as possible. Um, and I do this for a couple of reasons. One of the reasons is I like the way it feels, uh, which is a bit strange. But also another reason is I like to prove to myself I'm not afraid of the dark. Now, I wish it was just that simple and that was the end of the story, but I do something else to cope with this. I, I psych myself up, okay? This, this would look so strange if anyone could see me, but I, I'll stand there and just, just get pumped, you know, as if I'm about to fight something in the darkness that is out to get me when there never is, right? But I'll, I'll start talking to the darkness as if there's anything there, as, as if I could scare it. And that's a, one of the reasons how I'll deal with it. And it's a bad method to do, okay? You, I don't recommend this method of going to bed uh, like that because there is obviously nothing in the darkness out to get me, but there are still walls and doors in pitch black darkness now. And the amount of times I have walked into a door or a wall or stubbed my toe, stumbled over a shoe, stumbled up the stairs because it's in pitch black darkness, man, it is not a good idea. The better method, right, is obviously to switch on the landing light and follow the light up the stairs. It's a happier story. It's much better. But there are other kinds of darknesses in this world. There's not just literal darkness like what I'm in right now, but there's a darkness we can feel, right? There's a, a, a pressing down on our minds and our hearts. It feels dark. It's when sad things happen. In this case, I guess, which I'm speaking about, is circumstances out of our control, like when diseases hit. And we can do nothing about it. We are all, I'm sure, can understand this in 2020. Being cut off from family, friends, just being isolated, with seeing our, our loved ones get ill, some of them die, it's... It, brings a darkness, right, that you can feel. It's not right. But here's the question, when you're in that darkness that you can feel, which presses down because of circumstances out of your control, what light do you switch on? How do you cope with that darkness? I wonder, do you just psych yourself up against it? Do you just say, this is just how it is? Just grit your teeth and get through it. This world is dark, sad things happen. Death is just a, a guarantee in this world. I wonder, do you find yourself doing that? What guides you through the pain of illness, the isolation that we go through, the loneliness we can feel? There's another kind of darkness as well, though, that we can face. You know, there's the literal darkness, there's the darkness from circumstances out of our control, and there's also the darkness which we, again, feel. But this is the darkness which we bring to ourselves through bad decisions, poor choices, right? Circumstances we bring on ourselves because we've said something we shouldn't have done to somebody, or we've just done something which was stupid, which has brought about a bad consequence, a darkness. It's just rubbish. We can hurt others and hurt ourselves. You know, a survey was taken out a few years ago on the uh, average amount of decisions people will make in their lifetimes. Okay, and the, the number they came out with was on average, a human being will make 700 odd, it's a weird number, 700 odd thousand different decisions in their life, of which they will come to regret 140,000 of them. Now, at face value, that does not seem too bad, right? Uh, 140,000 out of 700,000. That's not too many bad decisions, but let's put this in different, 
in a different light, okay? Say each bad decision was the size of a regular cup, a mug, and we stacked all our bad decisions one on top of each other, we would reach the same height as 14 Burj Khalifas. That's a lot of bad decisions. That's a lot of poor choices. That's a lot of darkness we bring on ourselves. And we do it all the time. This is a huge way which we can bring a darkness into our lives. And you know what? This is exactly what the people in Isaiah's day have been doing. Okay, Isaiah spoke these words which we heard at the beginning, unto us a child is born. It's amazing. They're from Isaiah chapter 9. But the previous eight chapters are Isaiah speaking to the people in his day, saying how much they messed up. How much they've brought darkness on themselves. It's only when you get to chapter 9 is when you get this incredible news. But before that, Isaiah says this, chapter 1, verse 21. See how the faithful city, Jerusalem, that's where God was supposed to dwell and be. See how the faithful city has become a prostitute. She was once full of justice. Righteousness used to dwell in her, but now murderers. Your rulers are rebels, partners with thieves. They all love bribes and they chase after gifts. They do not defend the cause of the fatherless. And the widow's case does not come before them. Chapter 2, verse 8, their land is full of idols. They bow down to the works of their own hands, the glorifying, loving themselves. 5, verse 20, woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness. And that is what they had done. They had grown so used to making bad decisions, being in the darkness that they thought it was light. They thought it was the right way to go. And I can look at them and think that's crazy. But then I only have to look at my own life for a few minutes and realize I do that as well. In the, in the moment, I can think these are the right words to say to that person. They deserve it. This is the right thing to do. Or this is the right thing. I should go with my feelings. This feels right right now, what I should do. And it's only after I've done it or said it, I reap the consequences of my own actions and actually I find out where that was darkness the whole time I mistake the light for darkness and I do it so much we make bad decisions we bring so much darkness on ourselves so the question is what do we do what light do we switch on in this darkness in these different darknesses we face what do we do with our Burj Khalifas of regret. I think a lot of us actually psych ourselves up against this darkness. We say things like, look, it's never happening again. I may have made a mistake here, but no, I'm never going to say that to you again. I'm never going to do that thing again. Or we say things like, it's not as bad as it looks. Okay, it's not as bad as it sounds. We water it down. We psych ourselves up against the darkness. We speak to the voices which might condemn us in our heads or the voices which might condemn us from people around us. We psych ourselves up. We grit our teeth. Or, and this is a co more common method, I think, we just ignore it. We just grow used to the darkness. This is just the way things are, Jake. This is just the kind of person I am. I make mistakes. I'm, I mess up. That's just what I am. And the pain in this world, the death that I see around me, that's just the world. That's just our lot in this life. You just grow numb to it. You just grow used to it. Nicola Voiland was one of seven men trapped in a series of caves in southern France where they were for over nine days. Um, it started off as just an innocent little caving exploration. Yeah, none of them were actually rookies. They were all pretty experienced men. Um, and they went into the recesses of the caves and they were going to spend a couple of nights there, actually. But it was the floods that came and filled the cave when they weren't expecting it. And it pushed their, their rafts right into the back of the cave and up high into the top little cabins. And they were trapped there for over nine days in cold, wet, darkness not knowing if there was even a rescue team searching for them not knowing if the next minute the waters would fill the cave completely and they'd be stuck and they'd just be underwater the waters would just take them over nicola said there was a point 
when we all wanted to just abandon it, to just let it all go. He said, there was a point where I just wanted to let myself sink, just embrace the darkness. They didn't know the way out. They didn't know the light. Darkness was just all they saw and they were just going to accept it. Until after nine long days, they finally saw the flicker of a flashlight of a search party's beam and they heard the voices of their rescuers who had drilled a hole in the caverns above and descended down into their cave. And you know what Nicola said when we saw them, the sensation was unimaginable. Unimaginable that we would be brought from this dark place to this light, that finally we'd be rescued. We thought it would never happen, but we are going to be rescued now. He said it was incredible. But you know what? The cave has said, it wasn't just the fact that they were now going to be brought out of the cave that was incredible to them, but it was the fact that this proved to them that they hadn't been forgotten. They weren't abandoned, but people had been searching for them this whole time and they had found them. And you know what? These verses we read for unto us a child is born tell us the exact same thing. You are not forgotten. You are not abandoned in your darkness. Though it might seem great, though it might seem hard, though you might mess up so many times, you are not forgotten. You are not left to just be in the dark. But this baby was given 2,000 years ago. That would be a light in our darkness. That God would be who this baby is. The God who is in the heavens. He would descend into our dark places to shine his light, to bring us out. Oh, I wonder, do you feel forgotten? Do you go through moments where you feel abandoned? You are not. Just look back at this baby who was born unto us 2,000 years ago. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The son, the son of God, Jesus. And it goes on in these verses to tell us who this child is, who Jesus is. It goes on to tell us he's the wonderful counsellor. He's the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. He is the light that shines in all kinds of darknesses we can go through in this earth. He is the wonderful counsellor to be there to help you through when you've absolutely made a mess. When you feel the darkness weighing in from the bad decisions you made, he's the counsellor who is wonderful, who will lead you out. He's the mighty God who shows you the way to walk. He's the everlasting father who holds you close in love when you feel the pains of this world hurt the most. And he is the prince of peace for our fear in the dark. He is the light that shines in the darkness. He is the sun that was given to us. He's the one we need. And you know what? He meets us where we are in our darknesses. He doesn't say, walk into the light and I'll shine the light on you. No, he says, I'm coming into your darkness. We don't deserve it because we often bring the darkness on ourselves, like I said. But he shines his light in our darknesses because of the grace and love he shows us. Look, the people in Isaiah's day did not deserve to hear this good news. Like I I just said, Isaiah for the past eight chapters has really been talking about how much these people deserve judgment, deserve to be abandoned from God. Yet he says in chapter 9 verse 1, nevertheless there will be no more gloom for those who are in distress. Even though you're in darkness, even though you brought this on yourself most of the time, nevertheless the sun is coming. Nevertheless, the light is coming. And here we are 2,000 years later. Even though we have abandoned God, nevertheless, Jesus still came. Nevertheless, this baby was still born. Nevertheless, the light is still here. I wonder, do you need a light today for your darknesses? Do you need to realise he's there? Do you need a wonderful counsellor? Do you need a mighty God, an everlasting Father? Do you need peace? He's here. He's the light that shines in all of our darknesses. Now, you might be thinking, it's not that simple, Jake. Okay, come on. I I know these verses. I've been a Christian for so long, for so many years. And I still make a mess. I still walk in darkness. I still can get overwhelmed by the pain in this world and just think, man, God isn't there. He can't be. And you know what really surprised me, actually, from watching that documentary on the cavers? Afterwards, um, after they were saved and brought out of the cave, the caves were blocked off and shut so no one could go in there and get trapped again. And Nicola said something which I just could not believe. I was absolutely just shocked. I was like, you are 
so stupid because he said, yes, the caves were blocked off, but if I found a way in to those caves again tomorrow, I'd go back. And I just could not believe it, you know? I was like, are you serious? You would go back? You'd go back to the place where you could easily get trapped again. Uh, you'd go back to the place where you went so low that you were considering ending it all. You'd go back there. What is going on? But then I look at myself and I think I do the same thing. I can be walking in the light. I can know what Jesus wants of me. I can see that it's better. And yet I'll still walk into a dark place. I'll still opt to go back to those places which hurt me. Say the words which hurt other people. Do the things which bring darkness on myself. I can still do that. And it just shows the fickleness of human beings really, isn't it? that even though we're walking in light, we can end up walking in darkness. And also when we're in the light and we can see who Jesus is, we can be overwhelmed by the dark places around us. It's like, you know, in the example of uh, switching on the light on the landing floor um, and then walking up to it with all the dark rooms around me, you know, at night. It's like that. Look, the light is on, but the rooms are still dark. I can choose to walk up the stairs into the light, but also I can opt to walk into a dark room. Often I do walk into a dark room again because I've lost a charger, I need to go get it. And I walk into the dark room to get it. And I, you know, you'll end up freaking out because it's dark and you, what do you do in those situations? Well, what I do is I turn back around and see the landing lights. Because guess what? That light has not been switched off. All I need to do when I'm in distress is turn back around and see the light is still on. And so it is with Jesus. Look, you may still walk into dark places. We do that as human, human beings. We are fickle. We make stupid mistakes. But guess what? Jesus' light is still there. All you need to do is turn around and see turn around and see the wonderful counsellor is still there ready to help you when you cry out because you've made mistakes again the everlasting father is still there and ready to hold you even though the pains of this dark world the circumstances we don't control may bear down on us the everlasting father is still there the mighty god is still in control oh when you realize the mighty god is there man he brings his peace the peace floods into the darkness you know what, most of the time, I think if we just believed that Jesus' light was still there when we wander back into dark places, we wouldn't be in distress so much, would we? He's still there. The light never gets turned off. He's the light to shine in our darkness. So when you find yourself in a dark place, turn around and see Jesus' light has never left. The wonderful counsel of the mighty God is still there. And one day, there will be no dark places where we can wander. You know, just like now, I mean, the morning sun and the sun doesn't just shine in the darkness. It expels the darkness completely. There's no dark places for me to wander, even if I wanted to wander into them. And one day, equally, the Bible tells us the sun will come down and expel all the darkness. He won't just shine in the darkness and be a light there, but he will get rid of it. There will be no more pain. There will be no more bad choices for us to make. There will be no more sadness because all of the darkness will, gone, will be gone. And how I long for that day. Man, I long for that day. But right now, we are walking in a dark world. We can see the light. We can be in the light. But remember, there are still dark rooms around us. And when they feel like they're pressing upon you, turn back to the light because he's still there. That's what he came for, to help us. Oh, if we knew the light and the grace of this baby born unto us, on those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For unto us, unto us, even in our darkness, a son is given, a child is born and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. In the greatness of his governance and peace, there will be no end.